Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before starting the video, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button and give this video a like up. At the cemetery, Molly tells Christina that her sweet, innocent baby is buried right here because of her. Molly yells that Christina wants to blame Ava, but she went to Ava's room to pick a fight. TJ tries to intervene and tells Molly not today, but Molly calls Christina selfish and self-absorbed. Alexis begs Molly to stop it, prompting Molly to lash out at her mother for being right on time defending Christina. She fumes that Christina never has to take accountability or responsibility for anything she does. Molly asks her mother if that is why she was so eager to get her law license back so she could help Christina steal her baby. Alexis breaks down in tears. Sam tells Molly they know she's devastated, but this isn't helping. Molly pulls out the affidavit she found written for Christina that was in her mother's briefcase. She asks if her mother was going to file it before her baby was born or rip her child from her arms afterward and give her to Christina. Molly knew Christina was not going to give her her baby. Christina admits, no, I wasn't. Christina cries that the baby was part of her, and she nurtured her. Molly cries that she killed her. Christina says she was her mother for eight months, and Molly can't take that away. Molly says mothers protect their children, and she is selfish and caused her baby's death. Christina cries that she loved her more than anything in the world. Molly fumes that she doesn't know the meaning of love. She says her daughter died because of Christina and yells at her to admit she killed her baby. Christina collapses to the ground in tears. Christina sobs that Molly is wrong and that she loved her baby. TJ checks on Christina and asks if she's in any pain. Molly meanwhile reflects on her and Christina's discussion about her being the surrogate, along with Alexis warning them that no legal agreement would make the baby Molly's. She flashes back to more arguments and disagreements between her and her sister over the baby. Rick tells Molly they should get her home, but she won't leave without TJ. TJ walks over to Molly, takes her hand, and they leave. Christina continues to sob, and Sam casts a nasty look at Rick as Alexis cradles Christina. At the PCPD, Chase calls Brooklyn to see how her mom's segment is going. At home and heart, she tells him she has to go, as the caller, Myrna, is still attacking Loy's accent on air. Don shows up to the set and informs Maxie that Lou has been moved to General Hospital. Dante explains she has had a setback and has been moved there to handle her knees better. He wishes he had more information, but felt she want to know. Maxie thanks him. Back on camera, Haven tells the caller, Myrna, that she was raised to know it's bad manners to critique the way someone speaks. Haven tells their audience that they at home and heart encourage everyone to use their voice and leave it to deception help them with their skin. Haven and Lois continue the broadcast. Haven introduces one of their new hosts, Pearl. Pearl reveals a new line of vegan handbags that will be available in the next segment. Later, Haven tells Lois she was fantastic and is a natural. Brooklyn says the numbers are great, and she sold the most products this quarter. Even Tracy tells Lois she did a great job. Privately, Lois asks her daughter to be honest with her. Is her accent unbearable? Brooklyn tells her the numbers don't lie, and she was a hit. Tracy and Haven join them. Haven agrees that Lois was a hit, and so does social media. Haven wants to book her next appearance and make this a regular thing. Tracy suggests they not inflate Lois' ego anymore, and they should head home. Tracy says they'll set up a call to book their next appearance. At the hospital, Liz takes care of Lulu when Laura arrives. She asks how her daughter is. They step out, and Liz explains that Lulu is stable, but her liver is still failing. They don't know why this is happening, and tests are being run. Liz says she's doing everything she can to keep her comfortable. The nurse assures her that Lulu is in good hands here and that they will get her through this. Laura knows what people must think about the situation. It's hopeless, and she should let her daughter go. 
However, she knows Lulu is a fighter, and they need to give her every opportunity to come back to them. Maxie arrives at the hospital and speaks to Liz about Lulu. Liz tells her what she can about Lulu and encourages her to sit with and talk to her friend. She says many people who come out of comas recall what people said to them when they visited. Dante returns to the station, and Chase asks about the funeral. Dante says it was a mess, and nothing can be said or done to help anyone. Chase asks why he's not with his family today. Dante explains he got some unexpected news and needs to bury himself in work. Chase offers to listen. Dante says it's Lulu. She's been taken to General Hospital and has taken a turn for the worse. Chase asks if Rocco knows, and Dante says he does. Chase asks Dante how he's doing, knowing Lulu could be slipping away. Dante doesn't know what he feels, or if he has a right to feel anything. He loves Sam, and he loves the life and family they created. Chase knows how great he and Sam are, but Lulu was his wife, and they have a child, so he can have complicated feelings for her too. Dante says they were divorced when the accident happened, and she was moving on with her life. He doesn't think she's lying in that bed dreaming about him. Back at the hospital, Maxie sits with Lulu and paints her nails. She knows Lulu will pull through this as so many people need her. Maxie says that includes Dante. She thinks Dante still cares about Lulu, and he was the one who came and told her about her being moved here. She admits she never told Dante that Lulu was going to tell them that she still loved him and wanted him back. She didn't think it would be fair to Dante, and he needed to move on. She tells Lulu it's time for her to come back to them all now, and that includes Dante. Dante walks in just as Maxie says this. Meanwhile, Liz talks to Laura. She says years ago, Lucky told her about Lulu's aplastic anemia when she was a toddler and how strong she was for her then. She says Lulu needs that strength again now. Laura misses Lucky and wishes she knew where he was so she could bring him home. A man is thrown in a cell somewhere. His hands and legs are shackled. He has a bag over his head, and he's sat down on a stool. Later, a man pins him against the wall and removes his hood, and we see that it's Lucky. Curtis, Portia, Jordan, Stella, and Marshall return to Curtis and Portia's house. Stella and Marshall excuse themselves to gather food, and Portia brings up the tension between Molly's father and her family. Jordan explains that Rick isn't well-liked in this town and operates in a gray area. She explains he's estranged from Sonny, and he and Alexis don't get along, so he prefers to stay far from Port Charles. Curtis says Rick is still Molly's father, and she clearly loves him. On the porch, Molly tells TG she's sorry about what happened today. This should have been about healing and putting Irene to rest, and she turned it into something ugly. TG says she doesn't have to apologize, and sometimes their emotions are too big to handle. He understands how she feels, and they will always be Irene's parents. He promises they'll figure out this grief together, and they embrace. TG confides in Jordan that Christina was never going to give them their baby. She had an affidavit to keep the baby, and Alexis was helping her. Portia has to go to the hospital, and hates leaving, but Curtis says they understand. Rick turns up at their door and meets Portia before she heads out. Portia tells him to make himself at home. Molly approaches her dad, and they embrace. Molly tells Curtis that they are going to step outside. Curtis checks in on TJ and asks if he's hanging in there. TJ says he doesn't have a choice and keeps telling himself that time heals all wounds. Jordan says they are all here to lift him and Molly up. TJ says he's grateful for them. TJ decides to check on Stella and Marshall. Alone, Jordan tells Curtis that Christina and Alexis were planning to steal TJ's child. She says Christina and Alexis had an affidavit all drawn up and ready to file. Curtis is stunned. Jordan says Christina would never have thought about having a baby if it weren't for Molly and TJ, and that Christina would keep that baby would have been unforgivable. She also says that the child was TJ's child, 
and she would have given Christina and Alexis the fight of their life if that baby survived. On the patio, Molly thanks her dad for coming, even though she knows he hates being in Port Charles. He says he'll always be here when she needs him. Molly is drained, and she feels like she has fought a war. He thinks she won, but she says there are no victors here. Her relationship with Christina is in pieces, and Mom is taking Christina's side as usual. Rick tells her that he's proud of her for standing up for herself and her child. Molly knows that Sam and Alexis will gang up on her to try to forgive Christina, but she never will forgive her. It's Christina's fault that her baby is dead.